Today we're doing section 1.7, day one, and we're talking about the combination of functions, and um, more specifically, we're going to focus on domain restrictions. So the only time you have a restriction in your function is if there's a fraction or if there's a square root. So the issue with a function, or a fraction, sorry, is if the variable is located in the denominator, your variable can never be equal to zero because we know if I do one divided by zero or anything divided by zero, it equals an undefined value. Similarly with square roots, if I have a square root, you cannot take a square root of a pos or of a negative number and get a real number. We know that we take the square root of a negative, we get an imaginary unit, but the problem is when we state the domain, I want to know what the, my real values are. So if I have a square root, anything underneath the square root must be greater than or equal to zero. So let's try three examples. So letter A is x squared minus 7x. Notice there's no fraction, there's no square root, therefore there's no restrictions. So if there's no restrictions, my domain would just be negative infinity to infinity. And that's it. For letter B, notice I have a fraction, so the numerator isn't my issue. It's the denominator that is the issue, and the denominator cannot be equal to zero. So to solve this B factor, I do A times C, which is negative 3. My combination I would use is negative 3 and a positive 1. So I would do x squared minus 3x plus 1x minus 3. We group them. If you do the box method, put those four terms in the box. I take out an x, so I'm left with x minus 3. I take out a 1. So this quantity factors to be x minus 3 and an x plus 1. So therefore, um, the two values that are restricted are 3 and a negative 1. So the way we write our domain is from negative infinity to negative 1, union negative 1 to 3, union 3 to infinity. And again, the reason we do this, you can use any value in the whole free world except negative 3, or negative 1 and a positive 3, because if you do, you would get 0 on the denominator, and that would uh, result in an undefined value. If you're visualizing a graph, that's where your open dots would be. Lastly, letter C. So here we have a square root, so everything underneath the square root has to be greater than or equal to. So I'm just going to take the part that's underneath the square root, Notice I don't even need the square root, just the stuff that's underneath it has to be greater than or equal to 0. So I would subtract the 12 and divide by 3. So when I do that, we get the statement that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4. So the way we write the domain is from negative 4 to infinity. So a common mistake is that students will write this as the domain, negative infinity to negative 4, union negative 4 to infinity. However, that conflicts. This is saying that negative 4 is the smallest value you can use. Therefore, that part doesn't make sense. And it also says that it has to be equal to, so that wouldn't make sense. So just make sure you kind of think about your domain when you write it based on the statement that you produced. All right, we'll go over this today. We, I'm sure there will be lots of questions.